name is Shelby Price and I live in sunny Florida, sunny hot Florida right now. I'm often asked the question about pouring on photo paper. I've had excellent results with this. Um, you see, I use Canon semi-gloss uh, photo paper. You can buy it in several sizes. I like buying the large size and then I can cut it to whatever size I wish. A, it's a very good value and it dries perfectly well. Let me show you a few examples here. This is a stack that I've done recently. You see it bends. No cracking whatsoever. Paint's fairly heavy on this. Once they're, I dry them back to back. Or not dry them, I guess I'd say cure them back to back. Once they're totally dry, then you can stack them with paper or card between your faces. Just make sure that the medium that you're using isn't one of the ones that dries a little bit tacky, which some of them are a little stickier than others. As, as you can see, in the space, very small space, I can put a lot, a lot of pictures. Another advantage to it is that if you like half of the pour and you don't like half of the pour, just cut it down, crop it to the part that you like, get rid of what you don't like. Much easier than canvases. Another example, this one, the paint is quite, quite heavy on it. This one, the paint is extremely heavy on it. It's, a, it's a, more of a matte finish to it, but once again, very flexible. I can roll it up into a roll, unroll it, no cracking, no sides to worry about. You can frame it just like you would frame a photograph. Now this one was done with a um, a golden pouring medium and it did dry more tacky so I have to be more careful about storing that one not with too, too much weight on top of it but I, I highly recommend it I have done the full size the um, 13 by 19 size and I just got a, a piece of cardboard See, this one's been used quite a bit. A piece of cardboard that I taped around the edges of it with just clear packing tape. This was two pieces of cardboard put together. They make, make it slightly smaller than your photo paper, so your photo paper hangs over the edge a little bit, and that way not as much paint will get underneath. But as you finish your painting, you just lift the edge up run your finger under the paper and remove excess paper. If, this was your, if that was your painting and you just lift it up, take a palette knife or something and clean up your edge a little bit. Once it dries, I come in with a palette knife, go along the edge and it'll just pop, pop right loose. The other thing that I do It's not bigger. Okay. That paper's bigger. Okay, paper's a little bit bigger than your than what you're pouring with. This is double double-sided tape. Just take a piece of that double-sided tape, put it in the middle of your support board, stick your paper down. It'll stay in place the whole time that you're pouring. 
once you have it on a support board you can set them on cups hold it up do your pour pick it up tilt I have before even taken my cups and taped them to the bottom of my board just so that when I lay it down it's always in a perfect position That's one of my favorite things to pour on. You can also use um, just foam board as a backing board. A little more costly, but very sturdy. Would work quite nicely. I have actually some leftover acrylic uh, pieces of glass for framing that I have not used. These I bought because they were anti-glare, but I found that the anti-glare cut down the vibrancy of my picture a little bit, so I haven't used them. But they would make great backer boards because you could just wash it right off. This still has the film on it, actually. I haven't peeled the film off of this one. I think I'll use it and when it's messed up, then I'll peel the film off of it and be able to use it again. And it's actually a little flexible, which could be nice if you want to get your paint to run a certain way. So these are just a few of the reasons that I like working with the photo paper. If you haven't tried it, don't knock it. Give it a whirl. The only brand I have used is the Canon, so I cannot say how any other brand would work. Here's another example. This was done as a as a single pour but after looking at it I really like it as, as two so I'm going to cut it down the middle and frame it as two I have several that I'm going to do that way it's, it's like they just look better that way and with the photo paper you have that option to do with canvases you would not be able to do that Here's another example of a picture that I did when I got finished with it. I wasn't that happy with the two sides together. So when I crop this like that, I'm much more pleased with the whole picture. So that's my intentions on that one, is to crop it there get rid of this part that just doesn't do anything for me over there and I could probably get an 8 by 10 out of that and make it a much much nicer composition if you like to keep your hands a little more tidy something else that you can do you can actually take your tongue depressors tape tongue depressors the back of your board just like that and you flip it over you got nice little handlebars for tilting works quite nice also supports holds it up a little bit just very simple thing to do Your paper is just tacked by that amount, so you can run your hand around any time, clean off paint. Works very, very nicely. Here's another one. This is an MDF board, and I just put a wire rack on the back, taped it on there. Pulls it up off the thing. So you can be creative and make any type of a support board that works for you. Happy painting, and I hope you'll give the, the um, photo paper a try. Bye-bye.